Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here with Peterson Electric. I wanted to do um, one good video this week for you. It's about 480 volt, three phase. Uh, your boy black, red, or excuse me, um, brown, orange, yellow. Um, so basically we're gonna be talking about some machines that we've hooked up. They're gonna be little molding components that they're using for respirators. It's actually during the time of COVID, so it's April, 2020, and they're sending out these machines uh, these little parts to go to GE or Ford or whatever, and then they're assembling with these parts here to take it to New York. So it's kind of cool to be a part of that. But um, anyways, this is a Chicago vendor. I bought this about 11 years ago, reconditioned. Um, you set this up to reset. This does inch and a quarter, inch and a half, and some IMC. I pretty much only do thin wall. Uh, the trickiest part is getting this boot to always fit on. And then right here is your degrees to line up as you ratchet. There's an engage part and a disengage. So you engage when you're bending. And you just take your shoe off of your three quarter or one inch bender, usually fit on your one inch. And then you just use this to ratchet. Um, I always forget this stuff. So this is really good to know. Inch and a half is a 15 degree, 15 minus deduction for 90 degree, an inch and a quarter is 12 inch, okay? And you know that one inch is your eight, the one inch EMT is eight inch deduction and um, three quarter gonna be six and half inch is five that you take off your 90. So anyway, so right here, um, we're using our knockout set today, definitely a little tripod. That's my dad's from like 35 years ago. Um, and then a handy dandy bandsaw. Love using that compared to this. Nice straight cut. So today we're wiring up. This machine is rated at 230, 480 volt. But they wanted it wired at 480 volt because of another tag. But as we researched it, this is actually only a 230 volt machine. So our impacity was given to us, but we checked our charts in 240.48 or um, 430.250 or 430.250. And it so anyways, it talks about um, the running current of your motors as a squirrel cage. Um, we're gonna have to junction this because that's how it came with that box. I would have preferred to have a little bigger box, but I was able to use a four and 11 on that. The wires I'm gonna be putting in are not quite that number two. They're gonna be a number three. Because these wires are rated up to 85 amps, almost 90. And our machine's only pulling 70. Um, so here's the inside of it. Pretty fancy. The gentleman here knows quite a bit of how to fix these. But they've got a lot of uh, contactors, switches, fuses, ice cube relays some of your heater sets right here because what this thing does is it heats up plastic actually use a thermal box i'll show you that but this comes in and pre-presses your molds and so it starts out like that and then it forms and they snap it off like this and they're making little round mold fittings with male and female threads about a half inch to three eighths inch so what we're doing today is we're wiring this guy up with some 120 to here this is going to be a this building has 212 volts three phase um it's a 400 amp service but we're going to be pushing through and just giving them two power outlets over here Okay, and then through here, we're gonna be setting this disconnect. Anytime I deal with machines like this, it's around 72 amps. I upsize to my next size at 80 amp. Three phase FRN fuses, RK by little fuse, I like them. But I'll be knocking out here and here, and then I'll be feeding in line and then load. I'll be wrapping that up today. And this right here is the panel I'm coming out of. So I did a test on this panel for about an hour and a half from the other one too. And I 
measure how much impasse we're using and the temperature and mark the breaker. This panel's only running 50 amp three phase. The neutrals are barely pulling anything in both panels, 12 and 19 amp, because everything here is about three phase period. So we're gonna put some wire caps. I, I, when I got here, this is how the panels were. So we're gonna wire cap these off, try to label some stuff. But this right here, this panel's running off quite a bit. A, B, and C, anywhere from 65 to 99 amps. These are 200 amp breakers, uh, 22K rated. So it comes in as three phase 208. Then years ago, somebody about 10 years ago piped all this, did a really nice job, except for the used aluminum coming into the 208. So they're stepping up their voltage. Back here is a little 25 kVA transformer, about 400 pounds. And this is a little teeny one not used at 15 kVA. It is 40 volt, so they're feeding into it 60 amps, and basically from this transformer, the primary is coming in right here, so it's always going to be larger when you're stepping up on that conduit in the primary. My secondary coming out is coming into this little disconnect, and so that's a 60 amp three phase right here. If our infuses, I didn't wire that, um, and then in here is your 480 volt. I'm gonna correct this because they put the wrong color wire, whoever did that for them to get a 480 volt, that's not okay. I'll at least get some tape on those. But what I piped in was these two right up here, and I did that two weeks ago. So I piped this right here, coming down onto the strut over here. So these circuits are dead right now, but we, we're waiting on a 480 volt L16. It's a four wire or three wire plus ground twist lock, 30 amp. So that'll, then I piped into here and I snagged my 120 and joined it. And then once I snagged and put those together, it came down to here. And their original width was right here. So we just put on a bell box up here for 120, because this runs at 120, like eight amps. And that basically is a grinder. And then this down here, the rest of it continues. Now, I could have got away with some 10 or eight gauge, but I always carry six, so I put six gauge on it. Remember, you had to be 125% of your wire, of your breaker size on that, so. I believe this machine was pulling about 30 amps, so I felt like an eight gauge would be minimum on it at 480 volt, but I did step it up to a six gauge. So come over here. Um, oh, this is the thermal I was trying to tell you about. It heats up the water. So this guy's gonna be plugging into this 480 volt twist lock, and it has its own breaker. And that only runs about 27 amps, but it thermal at 480 volt three phase with no neutral. It thermals, gets everything hot so it can mold the plastic, grind it, shut it through, and mold it. And this is all the stuff they're making. So today, because that didn't come 480 volt, I, if they did, I was gonna come off of that machine that was already wired off of that 480 volt panel over there. But that didn't work out because they didn't check the voltage before they bought it used. But it was a really good deal. So we, we're just working with it. But once we get it running at 213 volts, we need to see if that 6, 8% is okay to be a little bit lower. Most machines have a tolerance of 10 to 15 or 12%. And it already knows that, so we'll see. But right here, we'll be coming in here because he's got a little grinder he'll be running. That runs seven amps, 480 volt three phase. And this other guy over here is that thermal running 23 amps. So together they're going to be about 30, 32 amps if they're on together, which he says they're typically not that often because the grinder grinds a little bit. But we're going to use some of those polar connectors right here and do a T-tap. And de definitely be wiring that in a, in a larger gauge wire to, to actually pull both of those on that same 
circuit. And that'll be ran at a six gauge at 40 amp circuit. So over here um, is the grinder. Shove it, see right, right in here. Just shove it right down in there. Rings it up, twist lock stop. So they only run about 78 amps. Not much. It's like a garbage disposal. Once it's done, it's done a blender. And then today I piped all of that and I made sure they have more than 490. At 390 is 60 off, 60 pairs. So we did turn, we turned this off when we were in here. But right here I had to extend some strut and make an H because they didn't have that in the past and I had to support that three quarter. But see, somebody in the past, I can't say this too loud, but they put in aluminum SER cable and I already told them I was concerned because this SER number two, if you look in 310.104A, 310.15B and 110.14C, you're gonna see that the six degrees Celsius is only good on the SCR aluminum, and it can only put up with about 60 degrees. And right now, I'll show you this. This right here, this guy is running that guy right over there, primary. And that puppy is too small. If it's a number two copper piped, I'd be happy. But that damn SCR, he put right up here and ran SCR. And I'm telling you, what a cheap SOB. Because number one, you don't ever run really SCR on this kind of machine. And number two, six degrees Celsius, because it's under a one gauge, you can't go to your 75 degrees Celsius per 110.14C. But the fact that 310.104A says that you can't on SCR on an XHHW-2 or not, you can't be more than 75 degrees Celsius. But you have to land it at the breaker's rating at 60 degrees Celsius. So that's really like 60 degrees Celsius period. And it's interesting is this thing was getting so hot, I was having a hard time touching it the day they were running this really heavy. It was running like 130 degrees Fahrenheit. That's like 65 degrees Celsius. So by the time we hit 75 degrees Celsius or maybe 150 degrees Fahrenheit, it's gonna melt. And I told him, I don't like how warm this is getting. Because everything else was running really cool, 98 degrees and whatnot. So anyways, guys, that's the end of the video. But yeah, just take a quick, slow glance for them to see. Again, everything comes in here, two separate panels, parallel, 200 amp. Outside is a big, huge gutter box, metered and CT by the power company. And basically, our job was to get this running at 212 volt and that over there at 480 volt. Thanks for joining us, guys.